We are back on BPTV, and for the very first time this season, we are ending the weekend with a conversation with our voice of the New York Yankees. It's our first edition of Sundays with Kay. Michael Kay, of course. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Nancy, and welcome to Sundays with me. Can't wait to get it going. Let's recap yesterday first, though, and that wasn't so great. Domingo Herman, he struggled from the start after a terrific spring, too, but he hasn't had great stuff. The loss, not all on him. The offense couldn't respond. But following yesterday's game, the Yankees did option him to the alternate site. So I'm asking, what's your take on the Herman move, and what are maybe some other moves that can be made to bolster the Yankees' pitching? Well, first thing we have to look at is that this is not a demotion for Domingo Herman. What this is is a move to bolster the Yankee bullpen. Kluber didn't give them length on Friday, and then yesterday, Herman didn't give them length. And when you're asking your bullpen to get you that many outs, you can't keep doing that every single game. So they bring up Albert Abreu to do that. Now, by sending Herman to the alternate site, you let him work on things. And also, if you look at it, the schedule, Nancy, they're off Thursday. They are off on Monday, so you're not going to need that fifth starter for a while. It's a smart move by the Yankees. Again, it gives their bullpen a little oomph, and I don't think there's going to be a real problem with Herman. I think that the rust of not having pitched in so long in the big leagues is finally showing. The command has not been there. In spring training, it's a different animal. Obviously, you're not facing hitters that are locked in as much. I think Herman will be fine, but it's a smart move by the Yankees, A, to make their bullpen longer, and B, just to take some pressure off Herman, kind of a reset button for him elsewhere what if glaber continues to struggle what do you do there do you stick with him until he settles in or do you juggle maybe well, I don't think that the move has to be made now. And I think that the key with Glaber Torres is you do not expect him to be Ozzie Smith. He's not Ozzie Smith. What you want him to be is almost what Derek Jeter always was with the Yankees. The ball is hit to you, field the ball. You throw the ball cleanly to first base. He doesn't have to make the great plays. He has to make the average plays, and then his offense will take over. Now, if he continues to struggle in the field, the Yankees have some moves that they could make. One of them is a little bit off center. They can move Gio Urshela over to shortstop. Stop. And that would make um, Glaber Torres go to second, and you probably bring uh, DJ LeMahieu from second and put him over to third, which is not his best position. Another thing that you could do is you could move DJ LeMahieu over to first, and then you could put Glaber Torres over at second, and then you could bring Tyler Wade back from the alternate site. You lessen the offense, obviously, but Tyler Wade is probably the best defensive shortstop on the Yankees' 40-man roster. You don't want to do that, though, because that last scenario that I just painted is you weaken the offense. It's not as long with Tyler Wade and you also lose when he's supposed to come back Luke Voigt so the best scenario for the Yankees Nancy is that Glaber Torres gets it together makes the regular play makes the regular throw and the Yankees don't have to think about this now in the long term maybe they have to think about moving him to second base because he's a better second baseman but when you do that it does create log jam problems the best position for DJ LeMahieu is at second base so if you move Glaber to second which is also his best position then you've got to move DJ over to first and you lose that power bat and Luke Voigt over at first base. That's not what you want to do. Again, the best thing is for Torres to straighten it out at shortstop. So many moving pieces. A move made today, and we know it's Rugnet Odor. He's going to make his first Yankee start. He's starting at second. Is this any kind of permanent shift? And this is the key to the game presented by Kia. Well, I don't know if it's a permanent shift, but it's going to be rolling until it doesn't work. Uh, the thing that opened the door for this to happen is that Jay Bruce has looked lost at first base. You know, he had one that one home run at Yankee Stadium, a, a porch job to right field, but he has not looked good at the play. That allows the Yankees then to move D.J. LeMahieu over to first base because Luke Voigt's still not available. He's on the I.L. If Rugnet Odor today gets some big hits, that'll be the lineup tomorrow. If he gets some big hits tomorrow, that'll be the lineup on Tuesday. So I don't think it's permanent, but it's going to be one of those things. You do well, you stay in the lineup. And that's the reason that Jay Bruce is not in the lineup and opened the door for this move. Michael, do you worry about Odor defensively? The Yankees do have him as a satisfactory defender, but he hasn't been consistent. 
Uh, you know, you worry a little bit because the Yankee defense has been somewhat compromised, and that does worry me. Be, you know, we just spoke about Glaber Torres. That's not a good thing. You want to be strong up the middle. You know, obviously Hicks could go get it in center. I think that Gary Sanchez has done a nice job behind the plate. But right now, they need some offense. That's the bottom line. It's strange because I know the Yankees are going to hit uh, throughout this season. That That's not a doubt in my mind. And if they don't hit, I think everybody in baseball will be absolutely shocked. But they need a jolt of offense right now. And what they're hoping to get is that 30 home run guy that started his career with the Texas Rangers and they'll live with the defense of Odor at second base in the time being. We're going to do something today that we did with Jack yesterday and that is make you commissioner for a day and Jack's answer if he had one rule to change would be to institute a clock. What would you change? Well, first of all, if I was commissioner of a day, uh, for a day, I would say I'm commissioner for all time. That would be the first move, so then I could have lots of moves to make. But I would agree with Jack. That would be one of the first things. You have got to throw the ball in 15 seconds. Now, when people come and tell me, oh, you should just be happy, so what if the game is four hours? I don't care if the game is eight hours, as long as there's pace. But as you have batters step out, pitchers walk around the mound, that kills the pace of the game. That's number one. So you said one thing. I'm going to give you a couple. Number two, the clown show putting a runner at second base in extra innings that has to stop it's ridiculous i understand last year when it happened if you're really committed to doing that so that you have 19 inning games and by the way i used to love 19 inning games you couldn't turn away from them that world series that game that went 18 innings who turned away from that i would have the runner at second base start in the 12th or the 13th inning and finally there has to be a universal dh why do we have to watch pitchers who haven't hit at all since high school try to hit in the National League. It was a failure on both the Players Association and on the owner's side not to have the DH in the National League. So those are the three things. And then in the next 5,000 days that I'm commissioner, I'll come up with other ones as well, Nancy. <laughs> Bonus rules. Fantastic. Thanks, Michael. Way to get off and running. Can't wait to hear your call. Thanks so much. See you soon. You got it.